Welcome back to the channel. My name's Jude. Today is Wednesday, March 18th. It's about 7.15 and typically we would be right in the middle of our congregational singing for our church service and tonight for the first time ever we're doing a hundred percent live stream service due to the coronavirus. Over the next three videos Jonathan and I will be showing you how we do the live stream from the video camera to the audio inputs and then to the streaming uh, services. So we're hoping that these three videos will help you make better decisions when it comes to live streaming. I'm Jude and this is my sound advice. This is Jonathan. He's my partner in crime. What a great guy to do audio and video, and he's in charge of all the video live streaming. And so here we have um, one of JVC's lower end uh, broadcast cameras. Um, when I say lower end, it's broadcast is their higher end type camera. So this would be the, the lower range of those high end cameras. And uh, some of the stuff that you're gonna get is the connections. The quality of those is gonna be a little bit uh, more robust. Um, for example, like an SDI um, output versus an HDMI output, um, things like that. Some XLR connections versus maybe 8th inch or maybe not even connections at all for audio inputs. Um, so this is, uh, I believe this this model, particular model is discontinued, but this is um, 600 series um, JVC broadcast camera. Um, and then we have one of their... Um, video viewfinders or monitors um, and this just gives it's not nece a necessity but just gives the uh, camera operator the ability to have a better view of um, what they're seeing focus exposure stuff like that it's just a little easier to see um, but not necessary by any means um, so our IO on everything is going to be um, you know we have power coming in we have a controller, um, LANC is the protocol, L-A-N-C, I believe. And uh, we have the controller here, um, and this will let us have uh, remote control of the camera for zoom, focus. Um, and if you were recording on the camera, you could do this. We're not, not doing the recording locally here. Um, and then we have our main output. Um, this is SDI. We shoot everything here at 1080i, 30 frames a second. So we have SDI coming out, that's going to go into a loop on this. So this will input here, loop out, and then it goes into the wall jack, um, which is fed up into the control room. This particular camera has a USB port on it, um, which allows us to connect an Ethernet adapter. Um, this particular one's wired, you can use wireless. Um, a lot of these JVC cameras have that ability, um, and I, would, I don't know but for sure, but I'd imagine that other manufacturers probably do as well. Um, but this gives us the ability to open a web page um, remotely that's built into the camera and do controls such as focus, exposure, and, uh, and uh, other, other settings that we may need to change um, in real time during the, sh during the stream. Um, on this particular camera, it does have XLR inputs, so you could come right out of your, um, your audio source come into this camera and then it would inject that stream into the SDI or HDMI output. Um, we don't use that here because our setup's a little different, but that's um, possibly a, a plus if you're needing to go uh, with a simple setup. So this is probably one of the most simple pieces of equipment, but one of the most important ones that we use. Um, this is a ClearCom. Uh, comm system that we use to communicate with our camera operators and the uh, director that's upstairs. Um, and it basically is just a, a hardwired walkie-talkie. Um, so it has two channels that you could use if we were using it for a different application, but right now we're just using it for um, the single channel here. And uh, pretty basic, but definitely a very important piece of gear. Um, and that just plugs in with a a uh, six pin XLR this particular brand does there's probably different different brands that use different different connectors um, and this is a handy dandy uh, 3d printed bracket that one of our members made that's pretty uh, pretty nifty 
that we're able to just mount that right there on the tripod. So here we have our video switcher. Um, all of our video inputs that we want visible in the live stream come into this. Um, this is not a necessary part in a live stream, um, but if you have multiple cameras, it's necessary um, in order to switch between the inputs for your for your uh, end product. Um, so this particular one has eight inputs. Um, we're utilizing with our three cameras right now, and then a computer feed for video playback and such. We're using um, four, five, or six for different occasions, but four most of the time. Um, and so they make all kinds of different ones. This particular model um, is a Roland. It's a built-in, uh, or it's, it's standard rack width. So if you have a rack to put it in, that might be a nice, something like that would be a nice fit. Um, I prefer the Blackmagic equipment because it's a little more affordable for the features you get. Um, and that just for comparison, this right here would be a black magic switcher. We're using for a different purpose, but that's what that would look like. Um, single rack unit versus um, something like this that you would have to have in some sort of desk space or um, rack. So here's the other end of our comm system. Uh, this is the base station. Um, and this has three inputs on it, I believe. Uh, per channel um, and everything's in parallel so if you had something to split those cables um, you could have as many inputs and outputs as you'd like um, for belt packs um, which is down there on the camera stands. Basically same deal walkie talkie type um, usage push to talk um, volume and then we have our headset here uh, that we use same way um, and then also our program feed um, from the audio coming from the recording mix comes into this so that the camera operators and the camera director can hear the service coming through their headsets. Um, next up we have our recording deck. Um, we have a dedicated recorder. We actually have two dedicated recorders um, for redundancy. Um, we just use the one mostly, but we do record both recorders each service um, in case one of them fails or something gets lost in uh, transmission when we're copying files. Um, this is a Blackmagic HyperDeck. They make several different models. I recommend them. They work pretty good. Um, so that's what we use instead of recording on the computer. We record it um, to hard disk for better reliability. Right here we have our PTZ controller. Um, these come in all shapes and sizes. This particular one's a JVC model. Um, it's the only one they're making currently. Um, this will actually control some of their newer broadcast cameras as well um, as the PTZ camera that they sell. Um, the nice thing about that is, like we were showing earlier with the network control on the cameras, um, you can actually control focus and exposure and stuff from a physical hardware control versus maybe a web page on a computer. Um, right now we're just using this for our PTZ. Um, our particular models are too old um, on our manned cameras for this to control them. Um, but this works well. Um, Sony makes good options there as well. Panasonic, um, PTZ Optics, just a couple brand names I throw out there that I, that I recommend and would um, endorse.